afternoon and good evening, ladies and gentlemen, from wherever you are dining in from. Thank you very much for joining us this afternoon, uh, London time. Um, I, I, I am Ian McDonough, I am the CEO of, of Blackbird, and uh, we have uh, some esteemed guests with us today to discuss the decarbonizing, decarbonizing of cloud workflows. Um, and they are uh, Remy Baudouin from the Chief Strategy Officer of ATEM, and Simon Crownshaw, who's the Worldwide Strategy uh, Director for Media Entertainment at Microsoft Azure. Um, so we are we're going to kick off just with a, a, a little bit of uh, a, a introduction about about each of our companies, and then we're going to we're going to chat and talk about the progress that's being made in decarbonizing cloud workflows around the world, the importance that that, that people are putting to it now, and what technologies are kind of coming through and emerging um, that are going to really help uh, to, to 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 benefit the world in the long in the long run. So introducing Blackbird just very, very quickly, um, for those of you that don't know our, our platform, we're a, a unique patented cloud native video editing platform. We, we work generally within, within the professional video area or for, uh, for professional news and sports uh, is really a sweet spot for us. And we're built very much with the, the user in mind. Um, and I say that because the, the user experience from Blackbird is very smooth, it's very, it's very, uh, it's very agile, it's very, uh, low latency and it, it, it's, it's got a high degree of performance, fast and flexible uh, and low cost. Um, and of course it is sustainable. Um, so uh, I'll talk you through a bit why, why it's sustainable in a few minutes, but we're trusted by quite a few people around the world. Um, these are some of the a selected number of our customers uh, and partners. Um, you can see there some, 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 well, most of the posts of the names I think on that page you'll probably recognize. Um, but I say you can probably see that the, there's, a, there's a real focus on, on, on live sports, uh, clipping and editing and publishing and, and live news, uh, clipping, editing and publishing. So just, to, just to, to kick off, why is this, why is the carbon challenge so important, especially in our, in our, in our video industry? Um, and, you know, we've obviously got, got some, um, some guests on today that are different parts of the media supply chain. But if you look at some, some snapshot statistics from our industry and look at data centers, for instance, Data centers are, depending on which stat you actually actually believe, and it does vary a little bit between two and four percent here. So I've gone plumped in the middle and said three percent um, of, of global CO2, CO2 emissions are from data centers, which is about the same or, or even maybe a little bit more than the aviation sector, which gives a bit of an idea about how, how serious this is for the industry that we work in. Um, a, a, a stat here from, from Albert, uh, that one hour of, of TV production reduced results in around 27 and a half meters squared of, of sea ice loss. And video consumption online uh, generates over 300 million tons of, of CO2 a year, which is about 1% of global emissions. So as you can see, it's not, we're, we're, we're not some, some uh, innocent bystander here to the, to, the, to the emergency that's going on around us. Uh, we are very much a part of it and, and, and contributing quite substantially uh, to it. So there are things that we, that we should do, the things that we, we can do as well. Now we at, at Blackbird, um, we, we have in our DNA, deep in our DNA, I would say, uh, really from the conception of the platform in the first place, the, the concept of efficiency. Um, and, um, and with that efficiency, which is, is built around cost and hardware and, uh, and bandwidth and, and everything else that goes around with it, is, is the fact that it, it, we are extremely sustainable. We're very, we're very uh, environmentally conscious and we're very, um, we're very just, uh, carbon efficient. So we did a uh, last year around around this time last year actually we commissioned our first report into this area, which was called "Video Shouldn't Cost the Earth," and it was really a, a deep dive into um, into to the areas of the of the media supply chain that we work in, which was which is the video editing part of it. So we did a, a carbon study together with a company called Green Element, uh, and we compared cloud workflows. We compared cloud native workflows, which is Blackbird, cloud uh, based workflows and on-premise workflows. Um, just a quick stat on, on, on cloud-based. Cloud-based is generally what I call the lift and shift of, of an on-prem workflow that's been put into the cloud. So some of the traditional NLEs that you will probably be familiar with. Um, and it was supported actually when we did this report last year by IMG and, and Tata Communications and Sky News Arabia, who all, all, all supplied different case studies to the report. The findings that came back were that the cloud native workflows, we weren't overly surprised at the, at the fact that we were more efficient. Um, you know, we're built around that efficiency, I would say it's in our, in our DNA. 
but we were very much more efficient. We were 91% more carbon efficient than an on-premise system. And surprisingly, even 80% more carbon efficient than a cloud-based hybrid system. So it was really quite stark and compelling um, the, the, the data that came back. And there's, there's some key reasons for that. Um, the, 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 well, obviously, the, the fact there's no travel uh, involved in, a, in an on-prem, sorry, in a, in, a, in a cloud system versus an on-prem system where you actually have travel to the, to the venue or to where the, uh, to, to, the, uh, to the edit bay. So that's an obvious one. But also in, in, in the Blackbird uh, example, we don't, we don't need, need any new hardware. So there's, there's, there's only ever a, a common or garden a laptop and a normal bandwidth uh, connection that's ever needed to, to use a, a Blackbird platform. So there's no new hardware manufactured and there's no technical waste um, uh, that, 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 that comes out the back end of that. But the key thing, the main difference between, between the cloud-based uh, and the cloud-native was the fact that we, um, at Blackbird, we don't upload and download shunt files backwards and forwards in high bit rate. There will be generally one uh, upload and one publish um, from, from any piece, piece of content. And therefore, uh, it's, not a, it's a very efficient way of, of, of moving um, content around. The, the, the Blackbird codec in which most of the content is moved around is extremely lightweight and efficient. Uh, and will be we, we up and go from up and down on a on a two megabit bandwidth connection, so extremely efficient. Um, so because we don't we don't move content from where it's actually initially um, created or where it's meant to be stored, um, that saves an awful lot of power, saves an awful lot of of, uh, of carbon. The uh, the study that we we um, we did actually won us very very importantly for us because uh, we're listed on the on the London Stock Exchange got us the green economy mark. Um, and you know, we, we, we know that one of the things that makes uh, sustainability um, uh, gives, gives some le level of urgency to companies is the fact that a lot of investment money goes into companies that are, that are, um, that are sustainable. So we, we won the green economy mark from the London Stock Exchange, which is important as, a, as, a, as an investment vehicle. And we also won from the IABM last year, the Environmental Sustainability of the Year Award, which was their inaugural award um, for environmental sustainability. So we're very proud to, to have got that. So what have we done since that, that um, we did that? So we, we, we then moved into um, this IBC Accelerator program together with, uh, led by actually BT Sports, led by Sky Sports, uh, NBC and the BBC, um, where um, the, a number of different vendors, including Blackbird and including indeed Microsoft, um, were involved in a, a new way of producing a live sports event. Um, and it was actually, they actually picked a Liverpool versus Newcastle United game, um, Premier League game on the 16th of December, 2021. Um, this was all cloud, uh, a full cloud uh, live sports production workflow. Um, the initial findings are, are quite, again, very, very compelling. It's 70% less technical infrastructure was required to, uh, to, to execute the, uh, the live sports production. Um, versus a traditional uh, a traditional setup, um, which obviously results in huge cost savings, but also huge carbon. There will be actually an in-depth paper to follow this, which hasn't yet, hasn't yet been released, um, but that will be, will be coming shortly. And so, you know, what we think, what we think has happened really over the last 12 to 18 months, and, you know, we, we do see ourselves as a, as, a, as a leader in this area, we take great pride in it, is the industry has, has woken up and there's a green alliance that's really forming around uh, around carbon efficient technologies, companies that are, are innovating and collaborating um, to, 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 to really make a difference in this, in this area. Um, so it's good news. Actually, things, things are starting to improve. Uh, emissions per hour of TV has dropped by 52% uh, already. So that's, that, that's really, really quite, a, quite, quite a, a, an amazing achievement in, in a short space of time. Um, and we saw the accelerator program was evident 70% less technical infrastructure. And we know that 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 our own our own uh, technology can result in ninety one percent less CO two. So we really believe with with um, looking at the uh, improving the technology and improving the collaboration um, that this is a, an absolutely winnable uh, opportunity, and we should really take advantage of it. Before I pass on to um, my next uh, colleague, I'm just going to very quickly um, show you a video. Um, that hold on a second. Um, that was created around the the, uh, the the accelerator program. Just hold on a second. Let's get to this.
Okay. Can you see my screen? Right, hope that works. The IPC Sustainable Live Production Accelerator is an exciting investigation into the way in which live content could be produced in the future. Absolutely now, normally, of course, we all produce football independently, we operate as rivals, but for this, for something as important as this, we're coming together because there is a climate emergency. UK Premier League broadcasters have come together with the support of the Premier League, international broadcasters and several key suppliers to review the impact cloud productions can have on our carbon footprint. This unique Collaborative initiative will help us better understand the challenges that we face as an industry and the areas which need further research and new solutions. As a collective, we will be analysing our work with the assistance of the BAFTA-affiliated ALBA consortium, who will be reviewing the data from the project. One back by White. Sissoko stopped it. Sweet as you like. This project's findings will enable Albert to make our measurement tool even more comprehensive. Our tools are available to anyone involved in live production to measure their impact, and with more virtual productions using the calculator, it's more relevant than ever. In bias, Peter Quetta. We'll continue to provide practical tips and advice on the innovative ways that we can all make our productions more sustainable, both now and in the future. And we look forward to sharing the findings with the industry. Great, well, I'm not too sure whether that came through in super high quality, so uh, I apologize if it didn't, but um, I'm gonna pass it over to Rami, who's gonna take us through his, uh, his introduction. Thank you, Ian. Uh, hello again, everyone. Uh, great video, Ian. Uh, we did not see any picture from uh, Manu or Chelsea. Maybe there is a message behind. We focus on Liverpool. Ah, okay. <laughs> and I won a great game by Liverpool yesterday. Um, back to business. Uh, thank you, everyone, for being with us. Uh, let me share with you, uh, in complement to what Ian mentioned, uh, the views of ATEM around sustainability. Uh, and it's great to have actually uh, software leaders like Blackbird upstream and Atem downstream and the infrastructure cloud provider like Microsoft talking about that. So first about uh, the company, uh, I won't give you a full speech about the company. Uh, I'm not here to give you commercial. You know, here you can see the success stories of Atem uh, and how we could grow step by step. Uh, but there is one thing that we always highlight in the company, explaining the success, but also explaining uh, how we could and now how, how we are working in sustainability. It's everything about innovation. On the business side, it does translate into all the tier one references, whereby now they are standardized on compression, CDN streaming, and cloud DVR. So that's for the business part. But on the sustainability part, we design everything in house. We design uh, the video codecs, the encoders, the decoders. We provide a value proposition around bandwidth efficiency, total cost of ownership, added value services, and so on. But as we control the design, we can optimize the performance of our solution. And once we optimize the performance of our solution, then we can reduce the carbon footprint. So the goal is not only to provide an high quality solution to our customers, it's not only to provide a solution to enable new services, it's a solution that will do all of that while reducing the impact on planet Earth. Just an example here. On this slide, we've put two things. First, the average consumption needed to stream linear services, 100 HD linear services, to a set-top box or to a device. We also had the storage needed for uh, storing a an hundred of thousand assets. And we added the power needed for uplinking onto a satellite. And we did compare the average consumption in 
2018 and what we can achieve nowadays. And thanks to the fact that we are controlling the design of our solution, we are, in, we are able to optimize the performances, gain bits, watts, uh, after with bits and watts, then we, can, we could reduce the carbon footprint by two thirds into these cases. This was not done at the impact of the quality of the innovation. It's just the fact that through a continuous innovation, we could lower the watt per channel or the watt per pixel needed to power these services. One could argue, yeah, but it's the more low new CPU came because Atem is a pure software company and so you leverage it. Well, a part of the improvement came from software. Yes, and from the CPUs. But actually, when you have a new CPU, you need to redesign or optimize your software to take the advantages about uh, the new uh, threading. So we could gain 100% of the performances because we control the design on the encoder, the caching server, and uh, the streaming services. If you don't control your technology, you can't achieve that. And again, there are also new tricks that we put in place in order to gain watts per pixel. If I put that onto a broader picture, I have here a picture uh, given at the courtesy of Proximus, a bit like Ian mentioned at the beginning. Video streaming uh, does not represent 90% of the global emissions. We are one, two, three percent. When we look at this uh, Proximus scope of emission, we are involved into scope two and part of scope three. The performances of our solution, the sustainability of our solution by the fact that we can reduce the carbon footprint lead people like Proximus to reduce their consumption at the head end or in their CDN and reduce the consumption provided or uh, enabled by the Proximus TV service. Again, it's only what, nine, 10% of the total value? Still, it does matter because every step matters. At that time, we want to go further. That's why uh, we have contributed to the foundation of a new alliance called Greening of Streaming, led by Don Robinson and Adam Kerwin. This is currently the only alliance whose goal is to think about what sustainability means inside our industry. We have indeed to admit that our industry is late to that game. We are still debating about, okay, do we need to take into account the television? Do we need to take into account the data centers? But if you talk about multiple data centers or multiple services, how do you do that? What does it mean? So there are plenty of questions and plenty of debates. And so we thought that it was a great idea to fund all along with companies like Akamai, Intel, and others, this alliance, this alliance, so that we can think about how we can measure, communicate, and innovate when it comes to sustainability. And the goal of this alliance is really from that matters. What can we do to make our industry not greener, but green for once? My last slide, uh, again, I started with a commercial pitch or not with a commercial pitch. I won't finish the same way. Meaning when we pitch to the customer, what's the value proposition of Atem? We can help our customers engage with their viewers with high quality of experience, TV or OTT service. We help them drive uh, the acquisitions of new viewers over 5G or over um, open caching CDN. We help them generate new revenue stream with dynamic ad insertion. All of these three pillars enable into our compression solution and our streaming solution. But nowadays, when we pitch that, this is done with sustainability in mind. We enable the innovation, we enable the business growth, we enable the monetization while lowering the carbon footprint. And we think that's key now. Thank you, everyone.
uh, I let the floor now to Simon for the final speech. Thanks for me. Very, very nicely not pitched there. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> Thank you, Ian. Thank Bye. you, Remy. Um, well, first off, it's just amazing to be here. I thank you, Ian. Thank you, Remy, for the invitation to, to participate today. I think uh, I think if you've heard anything over the past two presenters, right, I think we all realize that there's something here collectively that we need to work on together. So myself, Simon Crownshaw here from Microsoft, um, we believe you know wholeheartedly in the, in the effort around sustainability, especially in media. We've talked about it only impacting 1%. Um, but it's a it's a significant amount and it's going to grow as media gets bigger and bigger. Um, from my perspective, on the Microsoft side, I'm going to go through a few slides, but I think what I'm hearing here is a collective sense of everyone coming together to kind of think about how we can do this in a different way. So I'll walk through some slides. Um, but really it's about sustainability and media and how we can all do this together based on transparency, trust, and everything else that goes with that. So I'll share some slides here and then uh, um, I think we're going to launch into the panel conversation again. That's right. Let me know if you can see that. So sustainability in media um, from a Microsoft standpoint has many touch points, right? From a, from, a, from a media perspective, I think every organization at some point in time is a media organization, right? Whether you're a chief marketing officer or whatever else it might be, uh, you're all touching media at some point. And I think what we've heard so far across the different presentations here is that we're all on essentially a connected and common journey, right? We're all using certain things uh, to kind of figure out where we are from a sustainability perspective, right? At Microsoft, I think we've discovered for organizations of all kinds in every industry, the overarching sustainability journey is very similar, right? It's, and it's been our own experience and we see that with others as well. You know, the journey begins with really understanding where you are today, setting those future goals and making data-driven decisions and making the best steps to achieve those goals, right? I think there was some great data that both Ian and Remy both presented in terms of where we are today, but it's all about coming together for a comprehensive end-to-end -end digital solution. And from a Microsoft standpoint, really helping organizations think about how we record their environmental footprint, how they report on those pieces in terms of what's that progress look like internally and externally, right? Because a lot of this is about transparency. Um, the more transparent we are, the better we're gonna be. I think obviously we want to reduce those emissions, um, you know, going through some of the, the fundamental steps to improve that process by replacing materials and energy or other activities with cleaner options, and then really removing uh, the remainder of those emissions where we possibly can, right? So I think we're using data to drive those insights, results, and transformations. Um, but I really want to just call out, you know, the connected journey that we're all on. I think um, oftentimes we compete, um, depending on who's on the phone and who's watching. Um, but I think this is a, a common journey that we're all on and we can all work together. You saw the, the way that we all kind of work together for IBC, for example, which I think was a great video, Ian. I think um, a lot of times we look at sustainability as um, a, tr a transformational threat or, you know, it's, it's hard. I think it also provides a lot of opportunities, right? So for me, as we look at the economic data around sustainability and the measures that it presents, I think there's bold, um, activities here that can really drive us to go forward. I think we looked at some of the things around 70% cost reduction around the, the pieces for IBC, which is great, right? But we're also looking at, you know, it could lead to over $26 trillion in economic benefits through 2030. Um, it could grow and produce uh, over 65 million new low carbon jobs. I think that's incredible, right? Um, We've got globally governments and utilities alone are expected to spend up to $60 billion on energy efficient technologies investments by 2028. Um, so there's a lot going on. And we've got a lot of research here that I've kind of put on the screen in terms of 74% of consumers value ethical corporate policies and brand choices. And I think if you were to look beyond just streaming media and the things that Blackbird, Microsoft and other things do, if you look at what is happening in other industries, for example, ad agencies where people are now shopping and you know doing things very differently based on value and causes and everything else that's going on so there really are you know sustainable business impacts here but also they're good for business in the same way so the path ahead i think from media organizations and this is how we look at it from a microsoft standpoint is how do we meet that historic moment and transform the businesses that we're on right i think you've seen great examples from our other partners on this call here today right and we're going to encounter challenges and opportunities and changes along the go along the way, right? So we've got silo silo data, for example, where it blocks insights to reporting. Individual assets generate reams of data, but with no common data model or no governance strategy, businesses will struggle to turn this data into actions, right? Organizations that can unlock those silos can gain game-changing insights into how this is going to move forward. 
we've got the environmental impacts of Inquart, which are I think we could talk about those all day long, but in terms of you know the demands that are now happening across stakeholders, governments, regulators, customers, except, um, and are escalating, and you need to better have visibility on those impacts today in terms of the supply chain. What are we doing? Um, I think we could look at the live events, Ian and team on the phone here. What are we actually doing in terms of the waste and everything else that happens at those live events, and how do we manage and monitor those? I'm only gonna, I'm not, I could go through all of these all day long, but I think, you know, obviously opaque supply chains create operational and brand risks, right? So uh, investments in supply chain transparency can revolutionize business models. It's hard to do. Uh, I came from the industry before I went to Microsoft and it was very hard to get information shared between different, piece, different uh, organizations or different groups internally, that was hard. Um, and I think the other piece is really here around concerns about waste and circularity will gain prominence from media and telco organizations all over the world. I think as we think through that, Modern productivity in terms of the digital world requires new ways for employees to collaborate. We're seeing that, right? We on the Microsoft side, you know, we've seen the use of Teams explode, but also how we figure out how to make Teams more viable for media organizations to do things at higher resolutions and things like that, where people are now having to do validation of content really in a remote way that they never had to do before. We're seeing revenue shift as well as product and service delivery models move to a more digital environment um, as well. So I think you're seeing that. And then there's also those transportation alternatives. I think Ian um, and Remy as part of the IBC piece, we saw a lot of, you know, a lot of transportational um, benefits, right? Where there was not enough, there was nowhere or need, nowhere, need, nowhere the need for all of those trucks to be on those locations going forward. And that was a huge benefit, right? So I think we're gonna see film and television productions accrue much more um, of their carbon, uh, footprint from emissions and we can from, from sorry from transportation and if we can electrify that more sustainability initiatives to kind of do that i think we're going to see a big uptick in how that's going to work for us so i think our biggest problem um organizations simply cannot solve a problem they cannot measure so as we think about the way we measure this stuff it's going to be really really important we know that um, I'll blow through this slide relatively quickly, media environmental impacts, right? We know leading companies are transforming. We've got ethical brands and so on. Um, we know tentpole productions are, are an average of 3,370 3, 3, metric tons. We've got hour long TV dramas average 77 metric tons in terms of where they are. And we've got organizations like Disney, for example, who'd like to be net zero by 2030. So a lot of these climate initiatives are important both internally and externally. Uh, as well, right? So leading companies are moving to make those changes. Um, and I think you're seeing that led here by two of our other partners in this call, right? Between ATEM and Blackbird, really looking to achieve that net zero emissions for cloud workflows going forward. So Microsoft and sustainability, I think I shared a little bit in terms of where we are from a cloud perspective. So a lot of this is about leveraging data to record. Um, figuring out those insights to report on and taking actions to reduce, right? So we're thinking about how we deliver that intelligence to help accelerate every stage of an organization's sustainability journey, right? Um, there's, you know, I think there's a way to integrate disparate solutions into a system of record that really would work for folks. We have something called our emissions impact dashboard, which enables us to track cloud-based emissions and carbon, carbon saving potentials that, that could exist for media. Um, I think you're seeing it allows us to collect and analyze data and turn those insights into actions at every point. And I, I think uh, it breaks down those data silos that I talked about in a previous slide and enables us to gain that near-term real-time visibility into the things that we're doing and to support the businesses that we're trying to kind of sustain and maintain and make more effective as we possibly can as, as our customers look for us to do more in this space. So Ian and Remy, it's been a pleasure to, to, to participate and kind of give a chance to kind of talk about Microsoft and sustainability. I'll hand it back to you now. Great, thank you so much, Simon, and thank you, Remy. Um, okay, so I'll open the questions, uh, the floor up to questions from, from, the, uh, from the audience. Um, in the meantime, I'd just like to, to ask the, the, the team a couple, of, uh, a couple of questions of my own. So we've talked, about, um, we've talked about our own technologies and we've talked about how important it is to us. Um, I finished my presentation on, this, on, a, on a hopefully an upbeat note where I said there were, there were improvements being made. Um, how important do you both feel that, that collaboration is in this, in this area and how do you feel, how much progress do you think, feel the industry is making in that area? I'll uh, start with you, Remy. Well, you know, the, the one buzzword, no, one word to describe our industry is workflow. In workflow, you have the flow. So if you have one piece of the chain, which is not collaborating in the same way than the others, uh, then we won't be able to achieve the, the common goal that we have. So it means that we need to have each and every piece of the puzzle working together, just like the football team that uh, you presented during the, 
during the, the, the video. We all, work to need, we all need to work together to improve the performances of our solution, make sure that we can gain what's after what's, make sure that what Blackbird is producing and actually what Atem is ingested, because this is how we are connected each other, can save or can help save the planet. Good, thank you very much, Remy. And Simon, from your side. Yeah, I think uh, from my standpoint, Ian, I think it all comes down to something I said as part of what, you know, you know, maybe five or six minutes ago, right? Transparency, right? I think everyone on this call who's joining this webinar, right, is, is invested in this because it means something to them and it's important to the customers and people that they support. So for me, you know, whether it's sharing data, being transparent about the outcomes and learnings that we've taken, whether it be from the IPC initiative, Ian, or everything else, right? Where, you know, yes, we compete, you know, for business and customers all over the world, right? But I think ultimately this is something that we're all collectively involved in a connected journey. So it really requires us to be transparent about the things that we're doing together. How do we do it? What do we learn? How do we share those best practices and so on that make us better about doing this in the future where we can all learn from each other, right? I think there's a connected win for all of us here, Ian. So I think for me, the key is transparency. I think it's about sharing the data uh, and being, you know, being clear about what we did and how we did it. And so other people can benefit from that because I think that's what the IBC initiative was really driving to. And that's why I think you, me and others were all wanting to be part of that because of that very compelling story, right? To do something better for all of us. Yeah, well said. How much how much uh, uptake you had from the, the dashboard, the, the uh, Azure dashboard that you've, like, you've launched? How's that been? I I, yeah, significant, I think, right? I think uh, as, I, I don't know how uh, the folks would feel on the on the webinar in terms of where they are, right? But I think ultimately trying to get to a ground zero, what does our baseline look like for, for reporting? I think is really fundamentally hard, right? I think uh, I talked about data silos and the fact that data is really hard to organize internally around these initiatives and where does your carbon footprint really look like, especially for cloud-based workflows. Um, so I think for us, right, it's, it's empowering and enabling those organizations to use that dashboard to really just track for the very first time, what does the cloud-based emissions even look like? Um, and how do they kind of demonstrate or flag carbon saving potentials, right? So for us, we're seeing an uptick in usage of that because primarily it's hard to get at that data today. So anything that can give a customer an uplift or a chance to do something quicker or faster, they're going to take it. So I think for us, Ian, it's been a, it's been a big win for us across not just media, other organizations as well. I, I really liked your slide, Simon, about, um, about the, the, the sustainability is good for business. We'll do a couple of slides on that. I mean... We, we sort of touched on my presentation as well is that that efficiency in in power power consumption means efficiency in in you know in, in spend as well and it can often if you if we're, if we're moving the technology forward um to be more efficient for for, for carbon um then it actually stands stands in very good stead to be efficient in every other way as well so to to as you say to make all those incredible optimizations that you talked about um around around the you know the rest of the business yeah, no doubt. I think um, the business impact is, is huge. I think it's hard, right? So, I mean, you, me and others, especially for me on the Microsoft side, I think trying to go from a world that was not media was never super cloud friendly up until, you know, very recently, right, especially with the pandemic and everything it kind of forced us to go that route. But I think also it's realizing that we are we care deeply about the experience of our customers who want to have a great performance, whether that be making sure I can watch something in 4K, 8K, whatever else it might be, but I don't want to have any latency concerns. I want to make sure that my experience is not degraded to the point where I'm putting it in the cloud, but I, I, my customers don't like it, right? So for us, it's about what are those business impacts that can drive, and you need that data to really drive those efficiencies in, right? Because you can then figure out where you can make those benefits and kind of bring those out across your organization, whether that be in supply chain, whether that be in transportation, whether that be in collaboration, wherever else it might be. But to try and find those holes where you can kind of really make a difference, I think that's what we're seeing when we work with different customers around the world, whether it be in media or anywhere else. I think so. Remy, are you finding that also a way to get to your customers to, to act as to, to show them that can help them in the pocket? Is that is that an area, of, or are they yeah. are they working are they are they working because of their their conscience towards you? Uh, some of them they are working on it because of their uh, the financial pressure that they have. Yeah. You know, there there was a study by um, one of the French bank a few months ago saying that in five years from now nobody will be able to finance uh, its his, his or her venture without having a strong commitment, not only about environment, but about ESG as a whole. So I think that uh, there is the personal conscience, uh, consciousness, but there is also um, the, the financial pressure that uh, we have to do something. And we know that we have to prepare that future. So it's, it's not a question of degrowth. No, we are here to innovate. Our customers are here to innovate. 
but we are also we have to think that we have to do that with environment in mind. So that's uh, that's something that really they they think that they have to do. Great. Okay. Uh, I can see a question to come in that said, "Can I? Can we? Uh, can can Atem tell us about the green delivery suite? Can you tell us about that, please?" Sure. So that's a bit uh, the solution behind the scene of uh, the various graphi graphics that I showcase in my slide. Uh, the green delivery suite is actually the Atem solution uh, optimizing uh, power consumption. So this is really how we have uh, put uh, the best components uh, with the lower impact on, um, on the planet and that we put that together so that if and when you have customers interested into, yes, high quality solution, but also um, lower carbon footprint, then we can come up with a package and that's the green delivery solution. Uh, question for Simon, for, for cloud instances, Simon, what are the top three strategies for minimizing carbon footprint? e.g. selection of region, type of processing, et cetera? Yeah, we see that question a lot, uh, Ian. I think uh, certainly the, the regional impacts are huge, right, in terms of where the data centers actually sit and how do we make sure that we've got the right intelligent edge and intelligent cloud solutions sitting there to kind of power those pieces. I think um, some of the other elements uh, around are obviously total cost of ownership um, that we see, Ian, so a lot of it comes down to cost. I think I would be remiss to kind of not share that a lot of the conversations we have about cloud-based workflows and how does that make uh, benefit the organization come down to the on-prem versus cloud ecosystem and what does that look like? And you've got traditional financial people who would look and say, I've got my CapEx and OpEx costs and how do I offset that with cloud where I've got maybe potential increased cost, but then I've also now got to increase the team to understand how to use those cloud-based infrastructures um, to turn things on and off and make sure those are automated in, in the right way so that I don't end up with huge charges, right? So I think there's there are those kind of things, Ian, that we're seeing in terms of how we work with customers. That requires significant investment on our side to help enable them to do things in a certain way, help them with their data transformational journeys and really help them work through, you know, some of those efficiencies about where to put these things from a data center perspective. Where do we bring the right services and support process? Because I think we talk a lot in this call about technology, um, but it's not just technology. Technology enables it, but people and process have, have to realize that together, Ian. And I think that's a really critical point that we should kind of lay out that together, right? Because when I have conversations with leaders across the world around this piece, it is making sure that all of those three things come together, not just the physical location, the data center, and how am I getting that, that throughput and latency and bandwidth that I really need and everything else. Great, thanks, Simon. That's very helpful. So the, the panel are now open to, to all questions. So if you'd like to type your questions into the, the Q and A uh, panel, just the bottom of the, bottom of the screen there. Um, we've got another uh, question here from from Dom, Dom Robinson. Two quick questions, actually. One: How do we ensure we don't push energy demand down the road to other elements in the delivery chain? And two: What are the biggest impacts we've seen in the shortest time frames? What are the easy wins here? We've got a third question as well, if we've got time, but I think we, we will have. So let's go for those two questions first of all. Remy, would you like to start then? Um, sure. Um, so I think back to the first question of um, Dam, how do we ensure we don't push energy demand down the road to other elements in the delivery chain? It's a good one. Um, and this is where we, we need to have the big picture in mind. Uh, an example is actually um, introducing a new codec. So we are in the compression business. You know that uh, video compression uh, the goal of video compression is to reduce uh, the bandwidth needed for a given asset or a given stream. Uh, but so by essence, you would say, okay, with the new codec, you could take a, a bitrate at 10 megabits and have then five megabits. Usually it's 50% decrease. But when you introduce a new codec, then it means that uh, you are also introducing most likely new devices, a new TV set, a new smartphone. And so this is where we need to have the big picture because we, we have to take into account the savings that we can do on one side, which is about how you create the content and maybe the impact that you will have because you will introduce new stuff. I'm not saying it's good or bad because eventually with, for instance, the video consumption that we have, I think we need a new video compression. Uh, but we, have to have, we need to have the bigger picture in mind to make sure that indeed we don't uh, solve one problem by creating another one. Yeah. No, I, was gonna, I, mean, I was gonna echo the same thing, right? I mean, if if we look at um, 
you know, parts of the workflow in isolation, we are going to kick the can down the road, essentially, right, and say someone else's, it's someone else's problem to deal with, right? So from an organizational perspective or a workflow uh, aspect for even looking at sustainability, it has to be end to end, because otherwise you have no idea where the impacts and things are, because you could solve it in one place. And then I say, I've done my job and I've left it alone for somebody else to deal with. Really, this is about coming, like we talked about, right, in terms of being that connected organization to understand all of the different impacts across all of those different elements. And that's where you can highlight where you can make those wins, business cases and everything else that goes with it, right? So it has to be a connected journey from my perspective, Ian. Amen. Well, yeah, I would I would say that um, I would I, I think you're right. Um, it's always helpful to look in an end to end solution. There are there are ways though. I think that if you look at existing technologies, and this is probably goes into Dom's second question. You know, how, what are the big wins? Well, there exi- there are technologies that exist today that aren't aren't widely used, and if they were more widely used, then that would be they could be some very quick wins there. I think. Um, so I think it's just a case of maybe awareness, maybe knowledge, maybe. Um, people being, um, you know, a, a call to action there to get to get those technologies more widely used. Um, would you like to pick on that at, at all, Remy? Um, sure. Um, so I think, for instance, win? yeah, no, but you know, migrating to the cloud is one for me one of the shortest and biggest win, because when you go to the cloud, uh, and especially the the Azure one, then you can leverage all the flexibility and the scalability powered by a cloud provider. And when I think about that, I think, I'm thinking about elasticity. I'm thinking about the fact that you are not now uh, stick with hardware on-prem that you have to uh, power 24 seven. No, you have much more flexibility to turn on, turn off instances as per you need. One of the biggest benefits of the cloud is to work with a pay-as-you-grow engagement or pay-as-you-grow uh, business model. So. Th- Again, behind the scene, maybe you can save money, but also you can save energy. So I think that's one of the, the biggest impact that you can have on the short time frame. Well, I'm not going to argue with Remy, um, Kevin, um, but I would say that I think uh, uh, for sure, I think um, what we're seeing in, in Remy, right, is that cloud-based workflows are, are now becoming more like table stakes than they were two or three years ago. I think they realized the benefits of the, of the cloud, the scalability, the reach, um, the fact that you know I now no longer have to manage my um, on-prem data centers and I've got that scalability to go where I need to go. I mean, if you look at what Microsoft is doing with things like Azure Arc, for example, where it takes the ability to leverage not just one cloud, but multiple clouds in the same environment, I think is helpful because you need that reliability. You look at what we have with, you know, CDNs going down. We want to make sure that our experience is not degraded. So the cloud is super, super important. Um, and I think uh, for our standpoint, yes, there's a maybe a, a cost, but there's also massive amounts of benefits to go to the cloud in terms of what those look like. Um, and I think Remy did a really good job of articulating what those look like. But from a Microsoft standpoint, yes, the cloud. But I also think, Ian, you were dead right about saying there are certain technologies and things out there. One, some things that haven't even been invented yet. I think that we have to say that there is a lot of innovation still happening. Sure. Um, and I think, too, I think, um, you know, there is a lot of learning to go around and it, and it costs money, right? So people are resistant to kind of put their hand and say, I'm going to go and pick, pick this service to go and do something with because I don't know what's going to be there. And so I think they're kind of hedging their bets a little bit. So fortunately, I think on the Microsoft side, we've got the large scale and infrastructure to kind of support it. But I do understand how other organizations are thinking, where do I go? What do I do? Uh, and how does that work? And I think finding a cloud provider is a great way to start that because they're already making some of those choices for you. Fantastic. Thanks, Simon. Um, so question here from Laura, if the key is to push innovation to achieve better results by collaborating with one another, then what should be the framework? You mentioned an alliance of work groups. How can, how can we join the efforts? So she's asking. So it's a, it's a great question actually, because it, it, does, it does come down to, um, you just mentioned Simon, you've got this awareness, it comes down to, to, to people being focused on, on doing this. But again, we, we, we might well be guilty of just working in isolation or working in, in, in small groups. How can we, how, what, is, what is the best way to pull a framework together so the industry works as, a, as one? Uh, to you, Remy. Uh, Sorry. Uh, well, if, uh, no, that, that's, that's the, the heart of the problem. I mean, it's, um, like we mentioned uh, over the past 45 minutes, it's key to think big picture and end to end. And so this is where uh, uh, the Greening for Streaming Alliance, so because there was a question about that, but also others where we can group uh, partners, competitors, and the goal is to say, okay, here it's, it's a Swiss, uh, Swiss zone. So we are not here to talk about commercial, we are here to think about a common goal, which is sustainability. Yeah. 
So yeah. I, I think we need to encourage that. And when we look in the past, uh, all um, all the progress, you know, in terms of new standards, new thing, it's coming because people are grouping together. And this is where we could uh, enable uh, uh, at least the release of this framework. What about you, Simon? Do you think, you know, look, looking at the big public cloud areas, for instance, you know, the, there's lots of, a lot of um, focus on selling power and selling bandwidth and selling, and selling storage. Is there a way that, 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 that the, the cloud can get together to, to, to kind of turn that on its head and start selling technology instead? I think that's a, it's a really good point. I would say that um, the collaboration that we're, I think what you might have seen in the last six to 12 months is a little bit more close collaboration between a lot of the cloud providers in terms of what's going on and sharing. And I certainly know that happens at the leadership levels above me, right, in terms of what goes on. I think um, I love the question primarily because I think what the question really gets at is what, how do you make this real, right? Um, I think that's really what the question really gets at because ultimately we can talk at a high level about all these end-to-end -end workflows, how the cloud make these things happen, how does software and technology solve these problems, but ultimately where do I start and how do I get going? And that requires, I think, a little bit of transparency as we talked about, Ian, in terms of sharing those learnings. On the Microsoft side, right, we publish a lot of white papers and, and other things around how do we can do this, what, whether we for one industry or another, but I think it's going to require us to kind of create a community. Um, I think what you now see in the world is that we've gone from having these physical communities to now digital communities where everyone's talking about certain things. And panels like this are super important, right? Because it kind of builds a foundation or a collective group to come together. And it's going to require a group effort to really make this right. So I talked about the connected journey at the beginning. Um, so for me, it's really about how do we get quick wins? How do we share that information? How do we make sure that we're kind of identifying ways for people to do things relatively quickly and so they can demonstrate their successes to other parts of the organization and the, externally to other groups as well? So for me, Ian, that's, it's really about how do we get going on this journey versus um, anything else, right? Because I feel like you've got to make it real for people for them to realize the benefit of where we're going. I think that's absolutely right. Yeah, I and mean, you've got, got to entice them. And it's, 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 uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be a, a long road, but um, you know, as you say, as you said, it, it can be good for business and it can be good for good for everybody. So um, let's hope we can we can get more people to join us on our uh, on our crusade to to, to, to do this. Um, right, but left to me to, to to close the the, the session today. So um, thank you very much, Simon. Thank you very much, Rami, for your time. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us this afternoon. Um, you've come out in great numbers to, to 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 listen to us today, and thank you for your questions. Uh, have a wonderful day wherever you are. Thank you very much. Cheers. Bye-bye Thank now. you very much. Cheers. Thank Bye. you.